with a less than stellar record of six wins and four losses, the Baltimore Ravens, of which I was the head strength and conditioning coach, went on the road to play against the division-leading Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans were 8-1. and The previous year they were in the Super Bowl, which is the championship game of the National Football League. And this year they were having a better year than last year. We were playing at their place, at their stadium, in which they were 12 wins and no losses. They haven't lost a game in that stadium since it opened. So they're a very formidable opponent. They had an all-pro quarterback an all-pro pro running back, a very, very good team. And so the game was tied 17-17 to 17 in the fourth quarter. We had the ball with four minutes to go. We're driving down the field for what would be a game-winning score. And we're down in their territory, and our quarterback threw an interception to their defensive player and their defensive player ran 87 yards for a score. And I remember standing on the sideline in disbelief. I put the hands on top of my head and I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. It was such a sudden turn of events from being the victor to now potentially losing the game. So that touchdown's worth six points. Well, in the ensuing extra point, which is worth one point, their field goal kicker missed the field goal or missed the extra point. So instead of getting seven points, they had six points. So we got the ball back with less than two minutes to go. Almost an improbable situation. We faced a third and five, time was running on the clock, and our quarterback scrambled and he completed a 35 yard pass to our all pro tight end right in front of me on the side sideline where I was standing. The sideline all of a sudden had emotion and euphoria as we knew, hey, we could pull this game out. Sure enough, four plays later, we scored a touchdown, made the extra point, and we ended up winning by one point. It was a huge victory. As we celebrated in the locker room, our head coach, Brian Billick, pulled out a Sports Illustrated magazine. And the issue was released earlier that week. And on the title, it said, Remember the Titans. And the reason it said Remember the Titans is because there was a movie released just a few months before that. We're playing the Tennessee Titans. It says, Remember the Titans. Eddie George and company have quietly become the best team in the NFL. So he pulls this out, repeats this to the team. And, and so... He does that and there's silence. And he said, here it is guys, the best team in the NFL, shows it to us. He looked around and he continued, well, maybe they are, there's silence. Everyone watched him and he said, but not today and he erupted with emotion. We were going crazy because that was the turning point. That game was the turning point in our season. We could have gone either way. If we lose that game, it could have been a downhill slide. If we win that game, it's going to give us confidence and momentum to carry out for the rest of the year. And that's what it did. It gave us the confidence that we ended up not losing another game that season. We had four more games to go in the regular season. We won them. Four games in the playoffs, won them. We won the Super Bowl that year. We are Super Bowl champions. What got us to that point was adversity. Adversity can kill a team. We were tested through a three-game losing streak the month before, and that was in the month of October, when the offense failed to score a touchdown for five games. So we were questioning ourselves: offense versus defense. There was conflict, frustration, but, but the, the team held together. And it was through the players, the, the character of the players, and through the coaching staff. And our head coach, Brian Billick, was able to appeal to the hearts and the minds of the players through that adversity. And so he did it through the expression of three elements. The first element was authenticity. So to handle adversity, the first element as a coach is be authentic. 
authenticity is the degree to which which one is true in one's own personality, spirit, or character, despite any external pressures. Authentic leaders or authentic coaches are seen as genuine and not prone to using people or being fake or phony to get what they want. They're consistent during the good seasons and the bad seasons of life. And so Coach Billick, in my opinion, exhibited authenticity during that five-game streak, losing a uh, five-game touchdown streak. We, watched th we lost three games. And we had an exceptional defense that year. And so what Coach Billick did was, in my opinion, being authentic, he challenged the defense to get shutouts. We started the season with three shutouts where the other team did not score a point. And so he was very brash and challenging not only inside the locker room our team, but also to the media. So he was very authentic that way. He was very clear about what, what his expectation was. And so by that challenge to the team of getting a shutout, which is a team, which is a team responsibility, it's the defense, it's the offense, it's the special teams coming together to have the opponent not score. So by providing that individual and team motivation, that was one way to keep the guys focused on the task at hand. And so I thought he did a really good job with that. Now in my own life, as a strength and conditioning coach, I found out that earlier in my career, I lacked authenticity. There was times which I was only concerned about presenting an outward appearance to impress coaches and players. Because strength coaches have this reputation for being a tough guy, I felt victim to using vulgar language and, and, and tough talk to portray a certain image. I've since realized that being real and willing to, to listen and, 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 and connect with people is, is more important than portraying a certain image. I've learned to become more, more comfortable in my own skin, quite frankly. And once I recognized and accepted that fact, that I have certain gifts and certain talents, along with my limitations that are unique to me, unique to me that helped me gain my authenticity. So the first point is authenticity to uh, conquering adversity. The second point is to be humble. Being humble, a humble person is someone who does not think does not think they're better than someone else or more important than others. They're able to say, oh, wait a second, uh, what do you think about this? And listen to the response and give it thought. They don't view themselves as having all the answers and, and not listening. Humble leaders will do what's best for their followers, their team, their organization, their community, their family, regardless of how they may be scrutinized. The opposite or the antonym of humility is pride. Pride is self-sufficiency. And so our head coach, Brian Billick, exhibited humility during this five-game touchdown drum. Our head coach was known as an offensive guru. That's how he got a head coaching job. The team he was with prior, the Minnesota Vikings, scored the most points in NFL history. And that's why I was hired as a head coach. Well, with the Baltimore Ravens in this 2000 season, we didn't have the offensive weapons that Billick had prior, but we did have a strong defense. So Billick had to humble himself to look at another alternative for the team to be successful. And he did that. So instead of a an offense which is high flying, passing the ball around, scoring a ton of points. We became an offense that ran the clock down, controlled the ball, didn't create turnovers, and played field position. Something that an offensive minded coach probably is not their first choice. And so that scheme or that identity is what really brought us through to get us that moment of being a, a great team. In my own life, 
at the beginning of my career, I followed a normal progression from an assistant strength coach to a head strength coach. And then after being fired, I backtracked into being an assistant strength coach again. And so that taught me a lesson in humility. And so although it may seem counterintuitive, I discovered that I was more at peace when I reduced my ego and I reduced my need for self-recognition because that can happen, especially in a high profile profession like the National Football League. The National Football League is the most successful American sport there is. It brings in the most revenue, the highest TV ratings. And so it's a, it's a position of prominence when you're in the NFL. And so you can get caught up in that. And so uh, for me, um, I, I accomplished more by being less controlling um, and accepted that other people had unique gifts and talents that were separate from me, but they were still able to contribute to, to the team, to the, the strength and conditioning team. And so when I shifted my attention to serving others, it prevented me from focusing on myself. And then having that attitude of service and gratitude, it really suppressed my ego. And now instead of thinking about conceit, I was thinking about Thanksgiving. And you can't think about them at the same time. So that Thanksgiving overrode the conceit and allowed me to be humble and a more successful coach. And so the uh, third element, we have be authentic, we have be humble, and the third element to conquer adversity with your team is to be courageous. And courageous moments occur in the course of getting the job done as a coach or as a leader. It takes courage to confront someone. It takes courage to take risks on people. You believe it, especially when you're the one or the only one who sees potential. Courage is like a muscle. It needs continued use to be strengthened. And so Brian Billick, in this five-game touchdown list drought, three-game losing streak, in which we were questioning ourselves or we were frustrated, Brian Billick made a quarterback change. He changed quarterbacks. The quarterback is instrumental to running the offense. And so once Brian Billick elevated the backup quarterback, we took off. We ended up, our scoring per game went from, I'm not even sure what it was, but it went up to 27 points per game. Our defense which was a great defense, gave up 10 points a game. So we were beating opponents as soon as that quarterback changed, roughly by 21 points per game. We became a dominant team. So Brian Billick had the courage to make a move to go against the grain and elevate a, a backup quarterback. A backup quarterback who had intangibles to give the rest of the team confidence. And so I think of one of the things for me with courage was that I was a head strength coach in the National Football League at 30 years old. And when I became a head strength coach with the Baltimore Ravens, there were about 20 to 22 players 30 years or older, which meant that I was called to lead men that were just as old, if not older than me. And we're talking about some accomplished players. We're talking about players that are in the Hall of Fame, players that attended Pro Bowls, players that had Most Valuable Player Awards, players that have NFL performance records. And I was to lead them. And so that took courage. And so in order to honor that courage, um, I had to, I had to, view people from a lens of love. So what I mean by that is that just like some of us are, are fathers or, or mothers and we have children, 
I had to view players almost as I view my, my kids, that I love them. Because when you have children in the home, I have the courage to confront because I'm trying to change their heart. They're my kids. Once they're out of the house, they're on their own. They can go any which way in life. But while we have them, we're trying to train their hearts. And so in an NFL setting, I had to take that same mindset to the players. Because it's too easy if you don't love someone, you may not have the courage to confront. And so if a player is late for a meeting or if a player is not exhibiting the standard that was required in the weight room, I had to confront that player. But through a lens of love, I was able to accomplish that despite my personal shortcomings. The love overrode it. So we have be authentic, be humble, and be courageous. Those three elements are elements that you don't have to have the characteristics of being tall, being good looking, being an eloquent speaker. Anybody can possess or work on the three elements of authenticity, humility, and courage. And if you exhibit those three elements, in your adverse times with your team or your life, you can raise your team to a Super Bowl level. Thank you.